Kehelia behind bars, bouquets and brickbats to government. In a historic reversal, AKD gets official invitation from India. Surprising state ministerial portfolio changes. A Mahinda to manage Ranil's campaign. Fonseca faces Sajith's wrath. The leader, Deshita Magakena, Prouti Belagasma. Kehelia behind bars, bouquets and brickbats to government. A historic court order came at the weekend, and Kehelia Rambukwela became the first serving minister in recent history to be sent behind bars. But just like we said last Saturday, he was transferred from Welikada to the prison hospital. The accusation against him is very serious, that he had misled the cabinet and misused state funds by buying substandard vaccines when he was the health minister. Deputy Solicitor General Lakmini Girihagama explained it all before Malikanda, Magistrate Lochani Abe Wikrama. Kehelia stands accused of having falsely claimed a breakdown of the health sector within three months and submitted a cabinet paper on 13 May 2022 to allow the scam to happen. The magistrate ordered an investigation into all medicines bought by him under an Indian credit line and also into all supplies made by the accused Isolis Biotech Pharma from 2022. Kehelia's daughters told friends at the court that their father was innocent of all charges. Big shots in the government do not even answer their phone calls, they said. Now friends of the accused are taking President Wickremasinghe, his chief of staff Sagala Ratniaka, and public security minister Tiran Alice to task over this. They accuse Ranil of having sacrificed Kehelia for his election campaign and even threatened to expose those in the government. Their target is unclear, but Basil Rajapaksa's name too came up during the court hearing. Kehelia's lawyer, Anuja Premaratne, said it was the then finance minister Basil who decided to buy medicines from the Indian credit line. With him too in the firing line, Ranil now wants to remove Kehelia from the cabinet quickly. A senior official at the presidential secretariat sent Kehelia a message that he should tender his resignation letter by Monday morning. Anyway, Kehelia is enraged over those in the government who are manipulating things from behind the scene. So some are worried about what he would expose in court in the coming days. Social media is taking both Kehelia and the government to task. A few give the credit to Ranil for not interfering to save his cabinet member and thank Vijayadasa too. Tiran gets it above the others because he did not pressure the criminal investigation department. As Kehelia was evading the CID, Tiran ordered on Friday from Matara, where he was with Ranil and Sagala, to inform the Attorney General if there is evidence. Do not succumb to any pressure as long as I am the minister. Do what is right. I will take care of any problem, he told the CID. It is the duty of the executive and the legislature to allow the law to take its course and assist the judiciary in that process. In a historic reversal, AKD gets official invitation from India. Now games in the political form are being played before the traditional ones for the new year. Behind the scene games and hide and seek and infighting happen among the rivals. Knowing that the challenge posed by Compass is formidable, some gang up with others as the last resort. Government party leaders who met at the president's residence at Paget Road took this up. MEPS Dinesh, SLPP's Prasanna and Mahindananda as well as Basel loyalists were present. From the new alliance came Lanza, Yapa and Nalin and government partners Amarawera, Nimal Siripala and Duminda as well as Tiran were there. Ranil was accompanied by Sagala. When the SLPP said they thought it to be a one-to-one -one with Ranil, Amara Weera changed the topic by commenting about the trending of Compass. The JVP shows it has the public's backing by holding big meetings, but Nima Lanza brought big crowds to Jaela and ended that. Ranil, as well as most others present, did not take that favourably. General Secretary Sagara Kariyawasam said it happened due to the death of Sanath Nishantha. People attended his funeral and made a bigger impact than the JVP's trend, he said. They started and ended the meeting with the National People's Power as the topic. Government leaders, as well as their advisers, have now made up their mind that a compass-led government will come. Gota's advisor, Iranda Ginije in AFB Post, says there will be positive results from a JVP government. 
It will strongly curb big musical shows and beach parties that are a public nuisance. Some challenged his post with responses like, so what? And, is it bad? The Compass has by now accelerated its propaganda mechanism to maintain its hold on the public. In order to beef it up at diplomatic level, AKD met with German ambassador Felix Neumann. Also in attendance were the embassy's political attaché Darini Daluwate and NP's Vijit Hirath. NPP representatives have met a number of colombo basid foreign diplomats by now to ally their fears with assurances about its political and economic policies. Early this morning came the SMS alert that AKD has gone to Delhi on an official invitation. The Hindu reported it as Sri Lanka's JVP led alliance invited for talks in Delhi for the first time. Popular YouTube news channel WIO and 2 reported it. The party leader was accompanied by Vijitha Herath, General Secretary Nihal Abhisinghe, and Executive Committee member Professor Anil Jayantha. The Indian High Commission in Colombo organized their visit. The Compass has the JVP as its basis, and its approach has been anti Indian. They protested against the Indo Lanka Pact and the 13th Amendment that created provincial councils. It campaigned against Indian expansionism even during membership recruitments. AKD said recently the MPP was prepared to deal with India under a positive outlook. It is said that this will be followed by a tour of China by him. That means the JVP policy has moved towards a radical break. AKD did that. He conducts himself with control, although some of his comrades come out with old Wijawira-type slogans from now and then. Surprising state ministerial portfolio changes. The recipient of Sarnath Nishantha's portfolio was a contentious issue. Both Asoka Priyantha and Chintaka Mayadone wanted it to remain with a parliamentarian from Putalam, the late state minister's electorate. But their hopes were dashed. In the meantime, Lohan Ratwata got yet another subject added to his duties, stripped from Shashiendra Rajapaksa. A worried father Chamal raised it with Ranil, and the result was the presidential secretariat gaving Shashiendra the portfolio held by Sanath Nishantha. A Mahinda to manage Ranil's campaign. The state-run Silumina newspaper reported that Ronald Pereira has been appointed as head of Ranil's election steering committee. President's Council, Pereira will coordinate with other supporting parties and lead the propaganda activities as well. Other members of the committee are UNP's Colombo district manager, Lasantha Gunawardena, CEO Shamal Sanarath, and working committee member Christian Theodore. Ranil advised them to find a suitable place for their office and submit him a campaign plan. A concerned Harin telephoned a top man at the presidential secretariat. He claimed he was promised by Ranil that he will be given to lead his campaign, with Ravi K tasked with talking to other parties. Harin said they are already at work, with the propaganda plan finalised. The official replied the committee has been appointed as a unit at Sirikotha for the UNP's election work only. Harin hung up saying, but this news is confusing. Sources at his office say Ranil intends to have a campaign manager who will not be a candidate at the general election. Attorney Mahinda Haradasa is the likely choice. He is Ranil's closest confidant since his 1977 Biagama election campaign. Haradasa has already taken up financial and international coordination aspects of his campaign. Fonseca faces Sajith's wrath. SJB Chairman Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca took his leader Sajith Premadasa to task last week for accepting Daya Ratnayake to the party. Normally Sajith ignores such attacks. He kept his silence when Harsha, Hirunika and Nalin insulted newcomers Godahewa and Jayasumana. But he lost his temper when Fonseca declared war against Daya. He openly reacted to Fonseca in gala at a meeting with local government candidates. He inquired why anyone gets worried when he attracts talent away from Gota. Sajith dared Fonseca to leave, saying that many others were waiting in line to join him. He also warned of action against anyone trying to violate the party discipline. The opposition leader said no one should influence him over his choices in his politics aimed at macking people the king. His loyalists say Fonseca has undertaken a contract to ruin the CB. He was seen mocking the CAB's protest, held on January 30th in Colombo, by saying that not even 5,000 were in attendance. Some say it would have been his duty as the SJB chairman to draw a bigger crowd. Fonseca also insulted Dyer via the media. 
Only Harsha, Kabir and Iran spared him of criticism. Fonseca's chief advisor Seneca Pereira and his wife, the Renil loyalist Diana Gamage, are his close apolitical allies. Seneca himself is close to Renil now. Sajith is getting asked by the membership to remove Fonseca as the SJB chairman. Some say Fonseca will not give up easily if he actually is fulfilling a government contract to sabotage Sajith's election campaign. Now, the media unit at Sajith's office has turned away from Ranil and AKD and started attacking Fonseca. SJB-run social media platforms make claims such as finance ministry permission for Fonseca to release $527,000 and 100 sterling pounds held since 2010 presidential election, and that only 50 million is usable as the rest are eaten by termites, and that Fonseca has asked the finance ministry for the lost money. The Sunday Times carried an article on this under the heading Field Marshal Gets His Forex Back, But Termites Shock in Bank Vault. That is politics. Friends turn into foes and vice versa. That's it for today.